Niagara is the mightiest waterfall in North America and one of the Great Lakes' most awesome features. On average, 150,000 gallons pour over every minute, enough to fill over 60 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Niagara holds the answer to a prehistoric mystery. When did the ice retreat and the Great Lakes fill with water? John Menzies has come to investigate. It's the first time he's gotten this close to the falls. It's just utterly incredible. You see the volume of water is coming over per second. All the water from the central part of North America is flowing right over here as we stand. Fantastic. It's possible to date the arrival of the water in the lakes because Niagara behaves very strangely. The falls are moving. Every year, they take one step back, 12 full inches toward Lake Erie. The reason for this movement is the rock. The falls are built on two layers of rock. At the top of the falls is a hard layer of limestone, known as cap rock. Underneath is a softer layer. This is a piece of Queenston shale, which is the weaker rock from underneath the calf rock for this area of regional geology. And in fact, it's very, very easily to break, as you can see. Bingo. The weak shale at the base of the falls is relentlessly pounded at up to 70 miles per hour. The constant hammering erodes the shale below and undermines the cap rock above the cap rock gets left like a cantilever effect, and then it simply breaks off, and it breaks off every so often, fairly dramatically. In fact, if we look at the falls, there's a huge rock that's actually fallen off in the last 100 years. In a sense, you can look at Niagara Falls as being, a, if you like, an ongoing process of destruction. Perpetual destruction, perpetual change. The destruction means that the falls act like a giant timepiece, an enormous clock that allows geologists to date the age of Niagara and the lakes themselves. Until 100 years ago, the falls eroded three to four feet a year. As water was diverted for hydroelectric power, the erosion rate has fallen, but the falls are still eroding roughly half an inch a month. Eventually, given time, the hotels, the casinos and so forth are going to be left behind in the track of the falls as the falls retreats to the south and leaves this, this touristic area in isolation. If the falls continue to erode at this rate, in about 50,000 years, the falls will reach the base of Lake Erie itself. As the falls retreat, they carve a giant canyon, the Niagara Gorge. Three miles downstream from Niagara, geologist Francine McCarthy can date the Great Lakes by searching for the fall's birthplace. The secret is hidden not in rocks, but in clamshells. Well, that's, that's perfect. We can identify that to species. It's definitely the kind of thing we want to radiocarbon date back at the lab. This species of mollusk lives in Lake Erie. It was carried downriver and over the falls. The surging water wedged the mollusk into cracks at the base, where it died. The falls moved on. The shell remained. By carbon dating shells like this, McCarthy can prove Niagara Falls roared over this exact spot 7,000 years ago. The water level would have had to have covered this area in order to deposit the little aquatic clams in the crannies where we find them. Further proof can be seen in the strange rocks scattered around this whole area. These holes were cut into the rock by the constant pounding of water over the falls. But this isn't Niagara's birthplace. The further McCarthy walks from the falls, the further back in time she travels 
and the older the shells she discovers. By analyzing shells found all along the gorge, McCarthy reveals the life cycle of the lakes. From Niagara's spectacular location today to their location in 1678, when the first written account was made. Downstream to the Whirlpool Rapids, 5,500 years ago. Through Niagara Glen, where McCarthy's shells reveal their location 7,000 years ago. To Queenston, 10,500 years ago. And finally, seven miles downriver from the falls, where a natural ridge called the Niagara Escarpment cuts across the land. Scientists discover the oldest shells yet. The Niagara Falls are 12,600 years old. They've been operating since water started melting from the Laurentide Ice Sheet. And if Niagara Falls is 12,600 years old, then the Laurentide Glacier must have retreated at least 12,600 years ago, exposing the two lower lakes, Erie and Michigan. The mystery is solved. Like Niagara, the Great Lakes have continued to evolve over the millennia. But some changes happened much more dramatically than anyone imagined. Today, rainfall on Lake Superior takes 204 years to travel through all the other lakes before it reaches the Atlantic Ocean, more than 2,000 miles away. The Great Lakes flow east and always have, or so geologists thought. Scientists studying fossils in the Gulf of Mexico uncover surprising species. It forces them to reevaluate what they thought about the Great Lakes. Scientists analyzing 14,000-year-old shells discover the water in the Gulf of Mexico must have been less salty than today. But why? Only one source of fresh water was vast enough to dilute the Gulf. The Laurentide Glacier. Fossil records suggest the meltwater drained south along the Mississippi River to the Gulf. But then, nearly 13,000 years ago, some titanic force diverted the flow from south to east. The question is, what force was powerful enough to divert the Great Lakes?